Hey friends, it's Kari from the Alford Homestead and today I needed to repair my sewing machine. The horizontal spool pin snapped off. You can see where it was supposed to be. That's where the spool goes on top of my Singer Simple machine and it broke off. So it's a pretty simple replacement. However, I failed to find any videos on YouTube showing how to replace this little thing. So I just bought this part off Amazon. Um, I will link the exact product in the description box below for you so that you get the right one. You wanna make sure that you've got the correct model number. You can find the model on the back of the machine just in case. And there's this spool cap as well. So that's what it's supposed to look like once everything is repaired. And that little piece at the end that I pointed to, that is actually underneath the case of the machine, which is why we're gonna have to take the machine apart. This is the not so fun part. I actually recommend you guys starting from the bottom of the machine first. I'm not an expert, I'm just your average home sewer, but uh, luckily this wasn't too hard of a fix, but I do recommend, um, don't do what I did, and start from the bottom. It'll just make taking out the sides of the machine a lot easier. I also recommend that for each segment of the machine, you have one side and then you keep those screws that you used or that you took off together in its own pile so you know exactly which screw went where. Um, keep in mind that all the screws kind of look similar, but they're not. There are some plastic screws and some metal screws and some are a little bit longer and some a little bit shorter. So you really don't want to get all those screws mixed up. So keep them all separate in their own pile so you know which side of the machine they belong to. So you can see now I'm figuring out here, oh, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and take um, the bottom down to be able to get this side off. The sides kind of snap with grooves, so they kind of snap off a little bit easier if you take the bottom part of the machine off. It's easier to kind of get those sides off. So I'm working at the bottom here now. There's four main screws and a foot, so keep, keep in mind you don't want to lose that little rubber foot on the bottom. So now that we've got the bottom off, you can see what I mean by those grooves in there. And we're gonna go ahead and take the side off. You have to pull the knobs off. They'll pull straight off, so that's easy enough. Okay, so now you can see the side comes off a lot easier. And make sure you pull your, um, your foot down so that you can pull off the side a little bit easier. Okay, so now we can take the side and screw in our new horizontal spool pin. You can see how I fit it right in there, and in that little hole is where you will put your screw. Make sure that you keep your screw, otherwise try and you know buy a new one to replace it. It's, it's weird screwing in the plastic because the plastic itself doesn't have grooves, but um, it screws in just fine. It just took a little bit of maneuvering. And I just used a small little flathead for this. Um, that seemed to work fine for me. A Phillips head, I think, is what these actually required, but I just had a little handy flathead that I was using that ended up working totally fine, so. Okay, so now that I've got that screwed on, you can see how that fits. Just give it a nice little um, test to make sure that it's not, you know, sideways <laughs> or anything like that. And so now we're gonna go ahead and put the sides back on. So remember, it helped to have everything in its own pile so I knew which screws belonged where. The first time I did this, I ended up mixing up the screws a little bit, and then I had a hard time putting the sides back on the machine because I realized even just that quarter inch length that was a little bit longer than it should have been because it was swipped up, swapped out with the, uh, the wrong screw. I couldn't close the machine back up. So my husband had to actually come over and help me and he realized, oh, it looks like you've got two screws mixed up. You swapped them. You had a longer one where it should be a shorter one. 
So that's why I said, make sure you keep your screws together exactly how you took them out so that you don't have a problem snapping your machine back in place. And it's also a good time to just get a little paintbrush and go through your machine and get a lot get a lot of those cobwebs and dust out of your machine because you know you really should be doing it um, depending on how often you're using your machine I don't use mine that often but I've had this machine for 15 years so you know while you have your machine open you might as well give it a nice little clean to help your machine run smoothly all right, so you can see it just takes a little bit of wiggling around. That's probably the hardest side to get in. It just takes a little bit of wiggling, but we'll get there eventually. So again, I'm just snapping it in place. The grooves kind of go in together. So make sure that you're looking around the machine to make sure that the grooves are going in properly so that you can snap it in place. There's a very clear snap that you hear once you've got the sides securely together again. So you really can't miss it. You will definitely be able to tell when you've got it in securely again. So this was a super easy fix. It probably only took about 20 or 30 minutes only because I had to figure out how to take the sides off. But that's a good skill to have if you are a home sewer like myself. Um, you know, instead of paying someone 50 bucks or even 100 bucks to replace something non-mechanical, something easy, to just do this on your own because little things like this happen, especially if your machine is decades old. And this part actually only cost $10 with the cap, so it was a very cheap fix, and I'm very happy that it was back up and running in no time. And this was a Singer, Singer Simple machine. I would imagine that most machines that have a horizontal spool pin at the top of the machine would be very similar to replace the spool pin. So you would probably just like any standard machine, open up the casing to screw in the anchor portion of the of this bull pin. Okay, so I'm just going ahead and screwing in the last bit of screws that I have left here. And that was it. There we have it. A brand new spool pin on my machine so I can get back to sewing.